stream started. Before I get into the stream proper for the day, I actually wanted to do a bit of a impromptu Emacs tour of the actual kind of workflow I use. The idea here is I'm actually going to just cut this into a little YouTube video after uh, because that's simple theoretically. And uh, hey, today I'm a little lazy, so I'm going to do it all in one shot. That's the idea. So the basics of what I actually do with my Emacs setup is well, it's almost all entirely closure development right now, so I have a focus on all the tooling set up for that. And it's pretty straightforward. It's not too um, complicated. Uh, let me just adjust the text scale size here for simplicity. What I do is a really loose interpretation of what is called literate programming. Uh, and the basics of that are um, that you kind of write programs uh, with the readability for humans in mind primarily and the implementation of ideas to the computer or compiler intertwined within that kind of a document. So you end up with a focus on uh, prose for humans to understand uh, with um, code examples, blocks, and implementations in the um, document logic logical order. So something like that would mean y you might write an implementation for, I don't know, some kind of search algorithm and you do the actual implementation function you write that first in your document and then all the other little implementation details are either pulled in from other another library or they're written sometime after the fact as post amble sort of thing the reason for that is just to keep the logical flow of what you're actually trying to achieve front and center as the focus um, I say I do this in a sort of loose way because I uh, am pretty um, casual <laughs> about what I write and how I structure the documents. So I, you, if you've watched this stream or watched any of my videos before, you see I mostly use um, plain org mode um, for headings. And I do stuff like this all the time. Begin source closure and I just type my code in here and you can kind of sneak a little bit of uh, execution into some basics with uh, control X E yeah, ambient noise is a little greater today but that's okay it's just the way it's gonna be you know I live with the windows open sometimes so we deal <laughs> um, so this is a closure snippet example and what you can do if you've got things set up you can actually execute code right in line if I change this to closure script here it might actually execute for me apparently not let's give it a shot there we go executing the closure script code block it says right here Ooh realize I'm explaining without showing my screen. So let me start this whole endeavor over again. <laughs> let's do this. All right, let's uh, let's get out of that mistake. Let's start this over. Right, so I'm going to give a sort of impromptu whirlwind tour of my uh, Emacs workflow and setup. Um, I try to keep it pretty simple, pretty basic, uh, but I'm going to show you a few of the things I have here. And uh, what I'm doing here, this is actually live streaming right now. If you're watching this on my YouTube channel later, um, there are links in the description to my my uh, Twitch channel. I do YouTube and Twitch. A lot of it's closure programming, but I uh, leave things open for whatever I kind of feel like. Though, if you enjoy this kind of stuff, um, 
check out the Twitch. If you're on Twitch, check out the YouTube channel. You know, just check it all out. I uh, try to make interesting content related to programming, related to closure. So this Whirlwind Emacs tour, I'll just start by highlighting the ideas behind my loose execution of what's called literate programming. And um, literate programming, it's pretty straightforward. It uh, focuses on um, explaining concepts and clear decision communication and justification. Oh boy. Um, through prose to uh, to human audiences. So, um, to be glib about it, it's like a blog post with embedded code. <laughs> um, implementation ideas are explained first uh, and code blocks as examples uh, and implementation are provided in uh, um, interspersed throughout the document. So uh, my pragmatic execution of how this actually works is basically um, closure as primary um, language currently though these ideas go beyond that for sure you could use any language um, I use mostly closure slash closure script so that means um, cider inside Emacs is my primary tool uh, org mode is essential and then I do all uh, project code written in a single org file at the um, projects root folder. So uh, I often will do stuff like this. I'll have um, design, explain design ideas, uh, leave rough notes here. Uh, I'll even do um, to do have to do items though I'm not super organized um, to do become more organized there you go but so right there even I use a little shortcut that you get used to in org mode if one thing that's really nice about this is it's just plain text files but there's a lot of nice simple shortcuts and stuff that let you um, think and write kind of on the fly and then edit and switch up your document later on as you're going so for example if I want to add another to do I can uh, be on this line here hold the meta key and press enter and it nicely turns that I had it in the middle of a word so it ended up looking a little weird I can pop it at the end here do the same thing and I can just start another header um, and that works at any level here level you can just make a bunch which is really quite handy the other useful thing that I do all the time you hold meta and you can use the arrow keys and you can swap sections up and down so if I had um, this design section here followed by um, goals uh, these our goals of the project and um, I actually wanted that to show up before the design ideas so you can just swap that and the entire section will pop over it so um, star space and then some text is a top level header and uh, second third fourth and so on and so on and you can use the nesting and moving around of those things to quickly shift all your documents around. It's pretty straightforward and pretty easy. Uh, but the thing I love the most is writing code in blocks 
and you can write that with um, a really simple uh, autofill shortcut uh, opening angle bracket s and then you put press tab and it'll pop in a begin source end source tag and you can just right here write the language that you want to use so uh, closure is my typical language and what I can start doing is typing code there I can hold control X E to evaluate now this will show up right here and technically um, I'm pretty sure Emacs is interpreting this as Emacs Lisp so you're not gonna get necessarily the effects that you want doing stuff like that so um, you could also try control CC which can execute a block but by default this isn't working correctly so the real method I use here and this is where it gets a little more interesting for closure developers specifically is I rely quite heavily on launching a CIDR REPL and I do that by creating my org mode file and then MX and then I do CIDR jack in and in this example here I have this in a folder that only contains one org mode file it doesn't contain a lean project it doesn't contain a depths.eden or anything like that so uh, CIDR will launch but it's just uh, gonna ask because it doesn't think it's in a closure project so I can launch that with yes and you just give it a second and once that all loads up it will uh, show me a new buffer on the right here which is um, the REPL itself so I can evaluate code right in in Emacs this is just a REPL it's been <laughs> shown in many videos at this point um, let's do a text scale adjust for a minute here there we go and you can use the CIDR docs and all of that to set up your own um, uh, your own desirable things like keyboard shortcuts and, and various settings. The, the thing about Emacs is um, I personally try to keep things close to um, what you get out of the box so that I don't end up relying on highly customized things if I need to use a fresh Emacs or someone else's Emacs. Uh, the closer it is to uh, quote unquote stock installation the easier it might be to um, uh, the easier it might be to um, use someone else's install. Uh, hey, uh, Na Namlas too, what is CAD? Oh yeah, that's a fair question. So CAD uh, here stands for Computer Aided Design. And um, so typically you'll see CAD in the context of like 3D modeling and stuff like that. That's what this refers to. Uh, in fact, I have this here. This is a 3D model that I was just making yesterday. It's a 3D model of my mic stand. Uh, so computer-aided design refers to uh, 2D, 3D modeling for the purpose of doing builds and stuff like that, usually anyway. But uh, you caught me in the middle of actually just kind of chatting about how I use Emacs to do literate programming. Um, <laughs> if I'm totally honest, what I'm doing right now is um, recording a bit of explanation and showing how I use my workflow here because I want to cut it into a <laughs> little YouTube video later. Oh, right. So what is the correlation between Clojure and CAD? That's an ex excellent question. I can actually answer that for you. So um, this here is um, a program called OpenSCAD. Open SCAD is uh, Open Script CAD, and what that is is actually uh, let's see here. Let's see view. Here we go. So this 3D model's here, and it's generated actually by this uh, chunk of code. Now this itself is not closure, but there is, um, if I open up a different design file here, um, let me uh, text scale adjust this. There we go. Right, so 
uh, let me continue explaining what's going on here. I have um, this design file here, and this particular section of code is actually the code that generates the mic stand 3D model. And uh, what I do is write this closure code here, and it runs and emits um, open SCAD code. So the simple, let's see, what's kind of the quickest way to show you what's actually happening here? Okay. So this is closure code. These here are different defs of different shapes. So this mic stand adjuster thing uh, is all of these various things. It emits a closure data structure and then it ends up uh, transpiling, compiling if you want to call it that, to uh, this open SCAD. So I'm going to pop these both on the same screen for a second. If you bear with me, I can make this look a little neater. And I will show you what the deal is. Okay, so we've got the model here and the closure here. And let me uh, let's see, let me assume you want to have a look at only the adjuster. Let's isolate that and we'll, we'll simply comment out the other bits here. Save that. And suddenly you see the models changed and you can actually uh, see that the closure code is directly related to the model that you see. And now the final connection here, so I have FreeCAD in the title there. FreeCAD is another um, another open source CAD modeling software. Before I continue, apologize for interrupting. Never apologize for interrupting, that's totally cool, no problem. Uh, did I write the code or have it generated via creating the model. The code that I wrote is the closure code. So I wrote, I'm going to simplify this down with a, a, an even more straightforward to follow example, okay? It's super simple. Uh, let's see, what's the absolute simplest way to do this? Sorry, I'm trying to think through what the <laughs> totally clearest thing is. The code I write is stuff like this, sphere 20. Save that, and a sphere is generated. So what's going on here? The only code I've written so far, if we ignore the commented out sections, this sphere here is the code I've written, okay? And if I go and look at OpenSCAD, uh, where are we at here? Sorry, let me, there we go. If you look here, the code I wrote, Sphere 20, you did write the code first. Yeah, I wrote the closure code, and then it emits the open SCAD code. So this here, <laughs> the window on <laughs> the left of the screen is written by me. The code here, kind of in the middle of the screen, is not written by me. It is the output of the closure program. I hope that's clear. Uh, you can see it change. Uh, let's say I change this to 40. You can see the model change, and you see the code output here change as well. So thought you would have used some 3D modeling program then had the code generated from it. You did it all writing the code. Haven't seen it before. You have seen it, but you didn't know you could create 3D models like that. Yeah, it was actually a surprising uh, discovery for me a few years ago as well. Uh, so the general term I've been using to describe this kind of workflow, I call it, and and I'm I'm not sure there's like a official term for it, but I you typically use the word programmatic CAD like this as in the primary tool for communicating the design intent is actually code. Sorry, I realize I'm looking um, off screen here. <laughs> um, I, I'm still, I, I moved my camera to a different spot than I'm used to, so I'm looking at the wrong spots. Apologies for that. Um, 
what's the benefit of doing it like this? You, you know what? I realize I am going to do this. I'm going to go ahead and leave the mic directly in front of my face. And I think that's perfect. <laughs> Obviously not. That's that was that's ridiculous. OK, but I will do this because now I'm kind of when I'm reading when I'm reading the chat, now I'm more closely aligned. It, It's flawless. <laughs> All right, bear with me. Sorry about that. Okay, so what's your question here? That is quite cool. What's the benefits of doing it like this? That's a great question. Came because of the face, stayed for the content. <laughs> well, thank you. I grew this face myself. <laughs> oh, thanks for the follow. I appreciate that. Um. Okay, so here, let me answer your question. What is the benefit of doing it like this? That's a really good question. And I'll preface this whole thing by saying, I don't view this as a replacement for using graphical modeling approaches. I use the, I view this more as a uh, additional tool in the uh, quote unquote tool belt. So you can use it for a lot of useful things. Um, the thing that I try to express quickly is programmatic CAD is really good for those little bits of a 3D model that you don't want to manually create every single time. So um, something like a bolt would be a really simple example where a bolt has the same kind of idea behind it, right? Like uh, a bolt for it's got some threads, it's got a certain diameter, it's got a certain head type. But the concept, I want a threaded rod to to clamp something to something else is basically equivalent no matter what. It's just a matter of sizing and tool attachment. So if you could write a program that is called Bolt, and the only thing the user has to do is specify, I want a an M5 bolt hex head and it automatically puts that in the model for you suddenly you have one single file that can generate all possible bolts uh, now practically speaking there would be uh, you, you might ha it, there might be some quirks about how you actually want to do that but that's the basics so it's quick to replicate different variations of models, yes. And this as well is not a fully new idea. Um, uh, the uh, a term used in professional CAD environments is parametric modeling a little bit. So, um, oh, this is maybe, <laughs> oh, param this is this parametric modeling is is a mathematics thing. So we we won't go into that. That's not the same thing I meant. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think of, I'm trying to think of the term for stuff like this. <laughs> um, shoot, it was right there, you know, on the top of my head and now I don't remember it. Um, oh yeah, so you might see, so, so, um, the high level outcome of more complicated versions of this idea are uh, things called product configurators. So you might see this, let's imagine you were buying a car. Uh, you could go to a website and kind of view a model of it and you can pick a drop down, choose a new color. You can choose four wheel drive versus two wheel drive or whatever the features are. and you can imagine that configurator program linking to a 3D model that an engineer can then take and, and manipulate further. Now, cars are maybe not a practical example of this, but um, that this is this is configurator is another word that you might hear related to these kind of concepts. So I've used SolidWorks before in uh, designing stuff, and so this idea does exist within that a little bit. The nice thing about doing it all purely in code is it's really 
small file sizes, it's really easy for people to edit without any special program. They just need a text editor, technically speaking. And um, text versus graphical interfaces can sometimes actually be a little more concise and detailed with the needed explanations. So this is surely a case by case kind of thing, but I find uh, programmatic CAD to be a really nice way to use open source tools uh, to create cool models. So I, I'm not totally new to OpenSCAD, but I'm, I love, I prefer writing OpenSCAD code with, um, uh, with closure code. Uh, I'm trying to think, you know, maybe can, can I actually put a little more substance behind what I'm saying? I'm trying to think of another model that would be good to show you an example of. And actually, if I think about it, I'm going to try dig through my files and show you one that is a little closer to a real world example that I personally am quite proud of and excited by as ideas. So let's do this hydro one. So a friend of mine and I built a, a hydroponic system out of PVC pipe. And we, I kind of for fun made a hydroponic model of it. So let me go over here, have a little look at. Sorry, I, I need to uh, remember where my files are. <laughs> you know, are you familiar with that problem? I have that problem a lot. <laughs> All right, let's do this here. So, uh, just out of curiosity, uh, Nam, what uh, what brought you here? Was it? Uh, are you familiar more with CAD tools or more with Closure tools? Uh, I'm always curious to hear what brings people around. Please take your time. Oh, I guess I will take my time. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I'm trying to rush around. I just, the actually, the real truth about it is this: these ideas excite me a lot. So it's fun to, it, it's fun for me to kind of show the ideas if I can. All right, so I'm in the my hydro folder here. I have the out SCAD stuff. Oh dear, I have a drinking problem apparently. <laughs> One second. <laughs> that wasn't embarrassing at all. <laughs> <laughs> it is good coffee though so you know what I'm going to say that's worth it okay this hydro design let's have a little peek at that shall we so the um, this here design.cljc is the closure source I'm going to turn on the file watcher and the file watcher is a closure namespace that will um, run the compiler every time the design file changes. So I just have it running in the background and it will output out.scad. So let's set that up. CLJ M hydro dot watcher I think is the namespace I used <laughs> and then I just pass in design dot CLJC and now you give that a second to boot up sorry did you ask how I ended up on your stream oh yeah um I did um don't you don't have to answer if you're not if you don't want to but like you you came in and asked about CAD so I'm actually wondering I have the words cat enclosure in my description. I am a little curious what word, <laughs> what uh, background is more 
like initially brought you in if that makes sense because i do find closure is a bit of a niche language and closure and cad together are kind of an even smaller niche so i'm just kind of curious in general what uh, brought you around just a programmer nice nothing wrong with being a programmer nothing wrong with that at all i think uh Notice closure and notice I mentioned CAD. Yeah, so <laughs> the natural question is, what's the deal? <laughs> Do you use closure a lot yourself? Okay, gotcha. Well, thanks for thanks for letting me know. That is good to know. I do find more often than not people tune in because of the closure aspect of things. I think it's a. Uh, um, it's a language that kind of gets people curious, you know, even if they don't use it necessarily. You're not familiar with closure, but somewhat familiar with functional programming. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, obviously I'm a bit biased, but if you ever have like the desire to just poke around in other languages, give closure like a give closure like a half hour shot. Um, it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it a lot. Uh, maybe half hour is a little bit short. If you're gonna do 30 minutes, do closure script in the web browser, but I digress. If if you're interested in it at all, I'd say take that plunge. It's it's fun. I enjoy it a lot. Hey, Commander Thrashton gave me a raid. I just noticed that now. Thank you. <laughs> I'll take that. That's nice. All right. Uh this hydro thing, let's get it working. I noticed that I cleared an error message, so I'm gonna have to see what's up with that. No such file or directory. Okay, so I guessed incorrectly. Hey, Thrashton, how's it going? Saw that you, you, uh, you're raiding. Thanks for that. Appreciate that. All right, let's uh, finish explaining this for a moment here. Yeah, you got two people. Were you streaming? Uh, were you were you streaming programming or something? Something else? Yeah, common lisp. Nicely done. I I know I know that's your thing. That's your uh, <laughs> you're carving out that niche in in common lisp, eh? Nice stuff. Nice stuff. Well, I I'm not a common lisper right now, but. Uh, you know what? Closure's got the parens to match, so you know if you squint, it's kind of similar. <laughs> Maybe that's heresy to say that. <laughs> um, I forget where I put the file watcher on this one, unfortunately. Try it someday, man. Hey, Mike, how's it going? Yeah, Thrashton, um, Common Lisp is on the long list of languages I'd really love to be proficient at, and the literal only reason I, I don't try all those languages is, um, I don't know if you notice, I can get distracted pretty easily. So I need to, I need to force myself to focus a little bit, you know? So it's on the someday list. <laughs> I'm trying to uh, remember how I set up the watcher here, and it looks like I uh, just didn't. <laughs> I, I know, I realized something, though. What I can actually do, okay, is, do I want to do this? It's a little bit foolish, but I'll do it anyway. Okay, so clj-m, capilano.watcher, and I'll pass into it Let's see if this works. Let's have a little look. No. All right, I'm trying to remember in my brain box how I did all of this. <laughs> all right, let's see here. Hey, Mike, uh, saw that you tuned in, didn't answer your question. How are we doing today? I'm doing really well. I hope you're doing well there, Mike. I am, uh, so, uh, 
new follower uh, Namlas or or something like that. Hopefully, I'm not butchering the pronunciation too much. Was ask, was asking about how closure and CAD related. So I was given the little whirlwind spiel about that. So I'm actually trying before I move on to a little bit of free CAD stuff, trying to explain or showcase um, something a little more substantive than a sphere. <laughs> the name pronunciation is perfect. Fantastic. I think my actual least favorite thing about streaming is trying to get screen name pronunciations correct. Um, I don't like trying to guess it because I don't want to um, make an obvious error. And I also don't want to like totally butcher someone's pronunciation, right? Because it's it's nice when you can say things correctly. <laughs> that's that's like the thing I like the least, and it's not so bad as things go. <laughs> don't think people mind all that much. You're probably right. I, I don't know why I worry so much about it. I think it's probably not nearly as big of a uh, issue as it is in my own brain. But hey, that's uh, that's what I'm dealing with. So, I mean, I, it's the only brain I've got. So I'll, you know what? I'll just have to learn to work with it. You know. All right. Let's see. We've got. Okay. So we do have a watcher. I think I was just um, being a goose here. Let's try this again. Hydro dot watcher, and we'll pass in design dot clJC. It's the polite Canadianness in me. <laughs> We'll go with that, sure. Wrong number of arguments one passed to the watcher. What's what's going on now? What's the deal? <sighs> Let's see here. Let's see. Hey, Green Coder, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. All right, let's see what's up here. I'm just trying to, so I haven't opened this project and I'm just trying to remember how I have um, organized. Oh, there we go, there's the watcher. So here's why. <laughs> uh, do you have a day job where you work with closure? You know, that's a great question. And the real answer is no. My current situation is um, I'm working on, um, basically I, I've got this year, I've given myself this year to build out a few product ideas and get um, some early contracts with small manufacturers to do CAD automation tooling with Clojure. So uh, my job right now is product building and <laughs> streaming and YouTube to try and see if I can I can wrangle together enough of a uh, uh, enough of a an income that you might call it a job. <laughs> Believe in me, you got this. Well, uh, so honestly, I do appreciate that. It's a weird sort of thing. I am very confident that taking a chance like this when I look at the grand view of what my life will be I will be proud of this and most days I wake up and feel uh, motivated and calm like you're you're making a good choice you can work through this there's you know you, you got this like you say and there are some days where it's like do I got this I don't know man and it's like ooh, all day like do I know what I'm doing what makes me think I can do it and those days are, um, they're a little challenging sometimes. So any little bit uh, is really nice to hear. So I appreciate that. None of those days are bad enough that I stop trying though, which I consider that a little bit of a win. Um, the hardest thing for me is trying to stay reasonably organized while still being flexible enough to... Um, learn from successes and failures if that makes sense you know it's all a trick it's all a real trick playing a lot of games up here <laughs> okay so this watcher 
heart has a hard coded value into it. So now it's working. And now let's just pull out this example and I'll uh, I'll show you what's up. This is a little more substantive, a little more indicative of the kind of stuff that I would love to work on more thoroughly. Okay, so let's go into the design folder here. We'll just pop open Hydro. And out.scad is just the, the name of that file there. Okay, so our nice sphere, I'm gonna, you know what, I don't wanna close it. Uh, I'm just going to put it over here and just let it be. Here we go. So this is a, a so as models go, not too complicated. I'll fully admit it's, it's mostly just tubes with holes in them, but Hey, it's a good start. And the cooler thing about this model, right? This is actually, this is representative of the prototype that we made. So I don't know if you're familiar with hydroponics at all, but these, uh, black baskets here you put uh, growing substrate in there and then you plant kale or spinach or whatever in there and you get a pump down in the base you pump water mixed with nutrient through a tube up here into this whole tube it fills up uh, to well about the halfway line and you let water flow through there past around the baskets so then the um, the roots of whatever you're growing can can nicely soak up whatever water and nutrient they need and you leave the pump running the whole time it's pretty quiet and so you run it through the top here then there's another tube connecting it I, I say tube but it should be hose connecting it then you flow water down through this one and then down through this one so this prototype we built onto an existing shelf. This is uh, two by four pieces of wood with a V slot cut out, uh, not modeled on there, but we had a wire strap uh, that we just screwed down onto there with a bit of rubber pad so that the PVC didn't twist. Uh, hole saw cut a bunch of holes in there and glue the caps on the ends and thread some brass fittings into the side, the ends here very rather straightforward but now the reason that this is a cool thing to model and a really good example of what modeling with a program is is good for is um if i open up the model itself here and i open up this thing here i have a closure map that i just named parameters okay so let's change this levels to four and see what happens so i saved the file and if you look right here now you can Im see almost immediately the change reflected in the model right i didn't have to do anything it, it in this case it's super simple right it's just a new instance nothing crazy at all let's change this gap value here i don't remember what it changes okay so we've got a vertical gap changing right there so uh, you can see I put a little bit of structure into this. You've got the assembly level parameters, you've got the tube parameters, the cap, the basket, and the stand parameters. So all of that changes rather quickly once you've got the model all quote unquote wired up nicely, right? And you can imagine since this is a general purpose programming language, you can effectively come up with whatever relations you want between parameters. So one thing I'm not currently fully capable of doing <laughs> because I, I haven't studied it enough yet is using um, like numerical solvers to do constraint solving now that you can you can add that you can make that kind of thing you want if you want to in here you could take um, uh, something like core logic and do logic based programming to make some kind of crazy two-way connections where if this changes then it calculates an automatically different outcomes and like who knows what it's a general purpose programming environment so you can uh, use any kind of programming techniques to make models I think that's really cool I can't even think of all the possibilities right that's the thing there's so <laughs> you've got this wide open space to work in and you can kind of do a whole lot um, at the same time, it's really nice because it's a simple, it's a rather simple thing. It, you generate primitive solids, you do translates and rotates, you do additions and differences, 
and you've got extrude and rotate of 2D shapes. It's like 3D modeling for CAD is, if you really break it down, not too complicated, to be completely honest, which is a super nice thing as well. Systems that give you a, a set of well-working, simple tools really lets you build things up from the ground up. So uh, this is a just a little more of a practical example of that. So here's let me uh, let me do something like this. Imagine you live in a smaller apartment or something, and you don't have the same tube length. You can even see here it adjusts the number of baskets available right away. So you know there you go. It, you've got. You've got nice capabilities here. And now you could imagine, you could take this idea even further, right? Let's say you, you could easily program in here some kind of relation with, um, you can see a physical design flaw of a system like this might be, okay, well, I would actually want a third support for this tube in the middle here. Otherwise, at certain lengths, you're gonna get the tube sagging, right? This is just simple mechanical design. You don't want, <laughs> you want to be able to support things across a long length so that they maintain the uh, rigidity that they need. Um, so you could have, um, so you could change up the way the stand copies itself, right? If, if the total length of the tube is mod whatever number, add an additional uh, support somewhere in the middle, right? You can you can add that kind of thinking. Um, you can even start to do things like if I know the pump pressure of the pump that I have, automatically give me the total, like the longest tube length that I could pump with 50% energy usage or whatever, right? Like I, I want something where the pump is working at capacity without being burnt out. Uh, what's the longest tube if I have 10 tubes high with the pressure of pump that I have? So you can you can come up with uh, more and more abstract relations if you want to. Anyway, this is this is a little ridiculous here, right? But that's that's the idea. That's uh, that's why programmatic CAD is so intriguing to me as a as a method. And the cool thing is when we're talking about going to industry. Um, FreeCAD, now this is back to a different model I was working on, sorry, there we go. Uh, you can actually take the code you generate, run it through a FreeCAD converter that I'm working on, and uh, save this out to a step file, which is a CAD neutral format that's pretty standard in industry. Kind of like how you can, um, What's a good example for different programs? Like, hmm, I'm just trying to think of what a good example would be. It's a little bit like exporting a Word document to a PDF. No, that's not quite right. I'm trying to think about like a good graphical equivalent. <laughs> A little bit like saving to a PNG and all the layers are available and you can bring that into Photoshop or you can bring it into GIMP or whatever. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. I'm, I'm just excited about all this kind of work. That, that's the truth of it. So I hope, I hope that makes a little bit of sense, like Collada for 3D models. Is Collada the format? I think it is. Or is that a program? I don't remember now, actually, now that you bring it up. Oh yeah, interchange file format, you're right, yep. Uh, Kronos group, yep. So I do believe that the Collada file format, oh, look at that, it does have good coverage. Free CAD's on the list, <laughs> nice stuff. Photoshop's even on there. That's pretty cool. Blender. Got to use Blender. Yeah, so um, collaborative design activity makes sense. Um, 
same kind of idea uh, where my impression of Kalata is that it's used a lot more for um, 3D animation and rendering and that sort of thing. Step files are manufacturing focused, like automotive, uh, that sort of thing. Sorry, I'm trying to um, move my mic so that I don't look ridiculous. But now I'm like I'm like one of those over eager podcasters where I'm constantly adjusting the mic always. <laughs> Kalata is also for game dev tooling. Ah, yes, gotcha. So um, I'm not sure, Green Coder, if you're familiar. There's this other format that I've been keeping my eye on called uh, GLTF format, which I think is kind of meant to be the same. Oh, it's also the Chronos group. I wonder if it's a, a successor. Graphic language, I'm assuming, transmission format. Hmm. Oh, wow, that's cool. So this is the other really exciting thing about 3D in general. Format optimized for throwing at the GPU, if I remember well. Oh, okay, I gotcha. Neat stuff, neat stuff. This is all stuff that I actually will have to start digging into a little bit more because one of the exciting things about programmatic CAD is um, if you have one well-defined source file, you can create links to various different viewing and or editing environments. And the web, is pretty powerful these days and has a lot of uh, 3d content systems that you can start to kind of get your kind of sink your teeth into a little bit right so you can pretty practically make oh boy my goodness <laughs> this is a mess of a diagram I love it <laughs> yeah so GLTF I guess similar without going into actual research on it right now looks like it's got a similar kind of target audience that uh, Kalata does I mean I see Godot I see the game engines on here anyway these are eventual formats that I'm gonna probably get pretty familiar with because they could be really useful for connecting to this general idea step file it's a data exchange form uh, 3D objects in CAD. There you go. Yeah. So this is the this is what an ASCII encoded step file will look like. It's just text. You can technically learn to read it, uh, but you're gonna want a computer to do that for you because it's uh, they get pretty unwieldy. But that's a whole other thing. So the point I was just making is if I can open up an open SCAD file that I generated from closure in FreeCAD, then I can export step files. And I have wrapped that up into a script. So I do know that it is possible. In fact, here, this is my script. And this is the design file. If I run this, it outputs a step file. So So the moral of the story is it all works. <laughs> and the thing is it's not it's not all perfect yet, right? Like there's a lot of there's a lot of work that I have to do to get things um what's the word? more streamlined, you know, more product ready, but I'm well on the way to having a genuinely useful set of prototypes. And that's the thing that'll be cool to show small manufacturers. The reason that can be powerful is because I, I want to generally get the idea of um, the goal is not to replace a human designer in the manufacturing process. The goal is to do 80% of the modeling work, 80% loosely speaking, for your design team because it's like 80% of the models that you make for a lot of 
products are going to be the same or so close to the same that it's basically mindless work. And then the last 20% are things that your sales team promised or new features that you're trying to work on or whatever, right? They're, okay, well, uh, the shed I want to build, it's all totally normal, except that it's on a cliff that's this steep. Okay, well, the top part of the shed, the design's already done, but we need to spend a lot of time designing the post so that the thing will sit on your cliff for or whatever, right? Point being, manufacturing, a lot of stuff is the same, but there's almost always something that's different. And so you want to focus on your time and effort on the thing that's different and make the stuff that's the same as trivial as possible. That's the high-level idea behind all this sort of effort. So uh, this is a thing that we actually built as an example of, of using this sort of um, approach. I hope that this makes a little bit of sense to uh, people watching. I, I hope it's clear enough. The, the thing I like about this too is I'm using open source tools and I want to keep this stuff open source, right? So oftentimes there will be people who have really fun ideas or they want to try design a thing, but they might not have access to these, the same tools uh, for modeling and, you know, simple open source tools that you can grab off, off the internet. They're pretty nice or they can be anyway. I like that hacker maker kind of mentality, right? And this seems like it'll fit right into that kind of category as well. These are my dreams. <laughs> okay, so that's my that's my my babbling. I hope everyone's doing okay. By the way, feel free to uh, chime in with questions or projects you're working on. We don't have to talk about CAD all day. We could talk about whatever, as long as it's not like uh inappropriate <laughs> conversation i guess but hey feel free to feel free to chat i'm cool with all that i hope everyone is doing well and now i want to think about what do i actually want to do next <laughs> so the let's keep this file open no reason not to let's head on over to my dev free CAD CLJ and see, oops, see what we can learn from this. Let's uh, cider jack in. Da, 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 da. All right, so in fairness to the fact that I have the word free cat in the title, I think it might be good to uh, swap these windows around a little bit. How about that, huh? Okay, let's get this free cat window over here. Let's, uh, hmm, what's going on? There we go. Let's pop these bad boys around a little bit. Free cat. There's the REPL. All right, let's try to load up the REPL or load up the files into the REPL in a nice way and uh, see what we can do here. So this um, model, by the way, is the, it's parts of this. Mic stand. Um, I'm not doing it for any special reason per se. I was just messing around yesterday. Um, you could say practicing, loosely speaking, uh, some 3D modeling. Uh, came up with ways to do this sort of more complicated shape here um, in, in OpenSCAD code. I was figuring out how to model and write the free CAD models on my iPad. So the whole idea is getting uh, open source CAD modeling tools all set up in such a way that I can uh, 3D model on the go really nicely with this thing. 
Plus, I was lazy. I didn't I didn't want to like work too hard, so I just kind of messed around <laughs> yesterday. I uh, I'm I'm gonna be okay with that. You know what? I'm gonna let myself uh, take a day sometimes. You know. All right. So what's the deal here? Let's go. Let's do this. Let's uh, load file. Yeah, it's in source free CAD CLJ. So I, I'm still um, working hard to get used to um, uh, structural editing. People who've tuned in used to be really surprised that I actually didn't use any structural editing, even though I used, um, even though I use a Lisp language. So like uh, par edit or par infer, that kind of thing. Uh, I finally have a system where it kind of works in org mode, um, but I still have to get used to it. I'm still really confused by it sometimes. Like uh, I still don't know off the top of my head how to handle a situation like this where I want to basically get rid of a set of brackets. I'm sure there's a way to do it, but I still need to look up the cheat sheet all the time. And when the cheat sheet's not up, I uh, panic. <laughs> so, you know. And there's also weird stuff that happens sometimes like this in the cider REPL. It, this is, I don't know what's gonna happen now when I press enter, this is just wrong. This is an error of some kind. So there's situations where it's not perfect. See, there we go, we got an unmatched delimiter. Uh, for a reason that I don't understand. Anyway, just uh, be aware that <laughs> I'm not perfect <laughs> with editing this stuff. Okay. That's just part of the learning pains of picking up a new tool. Give it a month or two, you'll have it all sorted, be able to move around quickly. Yeah, fingers crossed, Mike, that's the hope. I think you're right. It just, uh, boy, oh boy, it is painful. <laughs> it is painful. Uh, the journey from zero to proficient is uh, not always an easy one. But hey, that's fine. That's how it goes. Oh, man. Reminds me of when I started using the Dvorak. Oh, man. So I'm intrigued by... Um, the Dvorak layout, but I've not yet been intrigued enough to uh, take the plunge. The The hardest thing keyboard wise, I'll actually, I'm not using it right now, but I, I'll show you in just a minute, uh, the hardest keyboard related change I've made. And that was actually pretty easy. So maybe Dvorak is possible. Uh, free CAD CLJ model.cljc. Hey, loaded. All right, all right. Oop, that's not the, uh... oh, I have some typo somewhere in there. Yeah, give me one second. I bet a few people are familiar with the um, Ergodox EZ split keyboards. I bought one of these a while ago. To be honest, the only reason I'm not literally using it right now is because I haven't, <laughs> I just haven't plugged it into my computer yet. There's, there's no real reason otherwise. But uh, this keyboard took a little bit to get used to, but I really, it is my favorite keyboard for sure. Do they make a difference? Yeah, you got one, Green Coder? I uh, really enjoy it um, for no actual reason, but other than like the desire to have it. I'm pretty sure there's a newer, uh, more svelte looking Ergodox. Um, and I wanna get one, but I don't need one. <laughs> Spent a lot of time on the setup. Yeah, I think that's the thing. I think I want to, like, I want to find a weekend and make this, like, my weekend project, you know, to set it up exactly the way I want. And uh, Namlas, to enter your qu answer your question, do they make a difference? Uh, in my, it's subjective, but in my opinion, yes, a very big difference. 
The single biggest thing that I found actually super nice is with a split keyboard, you can um, set them, I mean, you can set them wherever you want, but a normal keyboard if you actually if you're on a normal keyboard right now think about how you end up turning your wrists like this to point your fingers parallel so you get a little bit of a little bit unnatural twist in the wrist this way and it's not much but the thing about your joints is that if they're a little bit strained for a long period of time, you do start to feel it, right? You set your keyboard vertically? I'm sorry, I don't understand what you mean. <laughs> Green coder, you can use them from inside your bed. There. <laughs> do you mean, like, do you have a normal... I'm sorry, I I'm trying to visualize it. <laughs> Huh. I've never heard of that before, to be honest. That's fascinating. So in a case like you've got, honestly, like the real answer might be, I, I don't know. It it'll it'll depend on your 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 uh, preference, right? Yeah, you're messing with me. <laughs> but in all seriousness, <laughs> I'm too trusting. <laughs> In all seriousness, if you can move these out a little bit, you can actually just kind of keep your shoulders a little more open, which I, I found to be a really comfortable way to go. Um, <laughs> it Like, you could kind of simulate the idea. If you have two normal keyboards, now this is a ridiculous thing, and don't actually, like, do this for the real deal. I mean, you if you're, if you're typing vertically, you know what? All bets are off. <laughs> Tempted, but you haven't felt pain so far. Yeah, so so here's the thing too, is like, it, if you're not worried about it, don't worry about it. It's really simple, you know what I mean? <laughs> but all bets are off for you, because you, I, I, I think you're typing like this, you know, behind your back. You've got it strapped. Yeah, I bet, here, here's what you should do, okay? You should, like, you know when you go to the dentist and they like, they like alligator clip the little piece of paper on you. You just do this and then you, you swing it around like this and you've got a keyboard wherever you go and you can type like this. You could go on a run. You could type while you're running. It's perfect. Ergonomic. <laughs> to be totally serious, I love this keyboard. I really do. Um, if you're not worried about stuff like this, I would say, you know, it's a pretty expensive keyboard. So it's a pretty expensive experiment. But if you're using computers all the time, it's worth looking into, you know? I'm onto something, yeah. <laughs> uh, work out while you work. You can't go wrong. Cannot go wrong. Let's see. So I am gonna go to the washroom for a minute, but uh, when I get back, I'm actually going to poke around and actually try to see if there's something useful I can do with this uh, free CAD connection. But bear with me. I will be right back. Let me just do this.
All right, let's get back into this here. A green coder, here's my ErgoDocs easy layout. Let me... For anyone who's wondering about sending links into the chat, it's totally okay um, for reasons of never quite knowing. I don't, I don't typically open them up on my screen. I've got it open on my other computer here, so they're totally fine. Namless, you have to go. Thanks so much for teaching many new things. Hey, thanks for tuning in and asking questions. It's always fun to explain. Uh, have a good uh, day or evening or whatever where you're at. Hope things go well. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully I'll see you around. Have a good one. All right. Mm hmm. Do, 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 do. do I have a schedule? Ooh, <laughs> you're calling me out. So um, the answer is yes, mostly. So I do. Um, you have notifications. Cool. So Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday are the days that I target. Sometimes I have to switch it up, but I try my best to explain that when it happens. So this week, totally normal. Most weeks, totally normal. Um, I've been trying to do around 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time starting, but I actually moved. I'm in a new time zone, so I haven't fully dialed in a proper time to do it. So I've been starting a little bit later than that. So um, that the when I start during the day thing might change a little bit, but... If you tune in another time, you can, or if you look around my links and stuff, I've got a YouTube channel. I've also got a VODs channel. So if you can't catch me live all the time, you can check out some of that other content. So stuff like that is available. But Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. There you go. Mike's always on top, <laughs> on top of the YouTube stuff. That is that main channel. And... Uh, I occasionally feel compelled to do uh, bonus random time streams, but don't count on that stuff. So hopefully I'll see you around. Have a good one, okay? All right. Here we are doing a little bit of free CAD work. Green coder, I made the layout. Oh, the ErgoDocs layout, yes. With the purpose of never needing to move my hands. You almost don't use the higher row. <laughs> it's brilliant, I love it. That is a flaw in, um, so the I like Emacs a lot, but the thing I like about Emacs kind of, well, there's a few things I don't love. One of the things I don't love is like the ridiculous like piano playing you have to do for some of the default keyboard shortcuts they just like you're kind of like hooking your finger it, it just feels unnatural some of the time you're like ah, trying to get it to work so a setup like you're working on or like you've worked on i should say uh is pretty compelling it's pretty neat thanks for sending that link i appreciate that Yeah, <laughs> to have it at the time and energy. Isn't that always the case, eh? Isn't that always the case? I the, Like, my solution is going to be, look, I'm going to set out four hours on a Sunday to just slap on a good podcast and get this done. Use your index fingers to switch layers. Oh, that's that's pretty brilliant. I love it. Great stuff. Good stuff. I'll have a closer look at it uh, off stream, I think, to be honest. I, uh, I'd i like to see if I can in the next little bit. Oh, my watch is dinging at me to stand up. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, turn off notifications. You'll be way more calm. <laughs> okay. Uh, what I'd like to try and work on yet in 
this little bit of time is please focus. <laughs> Thanks, Green Coder. Keeping me keeping me lined up here. Um, this free CAD thing here, what I've been doing, you got to sleep. Hey, Green Coder, thanks for tuning in. Good to see you. I hope, uh, I hope you sleep well, and hopefully I'll see you around. Okay, so this, um, this free CAD connection, I've just been, um, generating code in the REPL and copying and pasting it into free CAD. What would be nicer is if there's a um, better way to do that. So let's see if I can build a simple workflow for that. Let's see what I can come up with there. I did it. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. So the thing I don't actually know yet is if I can hmm well let's okay Let's do a few things here. Let's go with, so the script emitter is what it is. Also, I do, there's an error here. Unable to resolve symbol A in this context. Uh, did I leave some scrap somewhere? Line 24. Oh, it's a shame green green coder <laughs> called me out telling me to focus and then had to leave so now they're not even going to see <laughs> see the fact that I can sometimes focus okay so the file i'm opening is source come on fcs And this line 24 has an error on it. I have no idea. Why that's like that. I'm not sure what I was even trying to do there. Huh, that's a strange one. Okay, well, let's uh, fix it in here. So the default right expression list, I think this actually should say forms. And we can test that quickly. Well, let's save that. Undefined A. Yeah, I don't know what, so all it was here I had the symbol A here, which doesn't exist, obviously. I don't know, I can't remember why I did that. <laughs> um, it was clearly related to some um, debugging thing, like I commented out this map cat here, which is, by the way, definitely incorrect. But I also realize I actually still don't know that the generic list implementation that I have here is actually going to work. So let's see what's up. Let's uh, pop into the namespace here. Okay. We've got, so it's loading successfully now. Let's try to write expression. Let's make a list of circles and then just run that list through write expression to see if it actually writes an expression. So let's define A. Oh, okay. This is probably where things went wrong. Um, sometimes in the REPL, I'll use A as a variable where I just define random stuff because it's quick to type. I must have accidentally been uh, foolish and <laughs> used um, the A symbol from the REPL in the source code. And that's uh, 
that's not good. <laughs> uh, let's just do a list of circle two cube four five six square 50 50 okay so a is this list of uh, things that's the technical term for it right expert a it doesn't work that's okay we can work on that so if I do map right expression on a that does work so what did I do wrong here um, Wait, why wouldn't... I think probably I've done a silly thing. Probably forms is wrapped too many times. Yeah. I don't know. Um... I feel like there's a name for this kind of mistake and I do it from time to time and I feel I feel foolish every time I do this so um, it's related to structuring and destructuring the stuff going into my multi methods and I personally I um, it's not complicated but I always do it uh, like I always think about it slightly wrong and then I end up like trying to wrap or unwrap things in the right spot it, it this this is more of a personal misunderstanding i think and i just have to practice so right so what's going on here i'm pretty sure what's happening is i can't run map right expression over forms because it's a list of one list containing the things so it's it's wrapped one more time than i wanted so if i were to like if i do this first forms right and define that right expression a now the form symbol is now the list it's not wrapped up and so now that should work if I were to rewrite this but now I realize maybe that's why mapcat was originally the thing let's see uh, if I'm thinking correctly it's possible that this will work no still not so if I do this map oh no 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 I'm being a little bit silly but hey that's fine let's uh, let's just do the easy thing for now I uh, maintain that this is a prototype right the whole idea is to get to reasonable feature parity between the SCAD CLJ library and the free CAD CLJ library so that I could make open SCAD scripts and free CAD scripts from the same code then to f then as I find weaknesses and strengths and stuff like that I can build out a little bit more structure around this and turn it into a library proper but this is a really good way to get more comfortable with FreeCAD and all of that oh of course this is actually yeah green coder that's exactly you're right I don't know why I didn't uh, didn't think of that one thank you that should do the trick um what's the pair edit um this is not a distraction this is relevant <laughs> i'm trying to remember is this the cheat sheet i've looked at before no Mm, PDF it 
Should just make this my my background, <laughs> my desktop background. All right, forget that it's taking too long. Let's just do it the cheesy way. Whoops, break it. Fix it again. Okay, did I break par edit? I did. Par edit, sorry. Okay, well, that's a problem for a little bit later. There we go, right expressions working. Thank you, green coder. Helpful stuff. Now let's see, can I turn par edit back on? So this is um, in the literate programming Emacs setup video that I'm hopefully getting done today. I need to get it done. Uh, we'll need to, I want to. I'll be explaining a little bit of the challenges I have with par edit working in the context of open, or pardon me, of uh, org mode. I have a partially working solution and it's better than nothing. So the free CAD script emitter Everything's loading, everything's working more or less. The simple thing here is to, um, so I have this right FCS function, right? I can do um, right FCS of A and it'll spit out, if I uh, wrap that in a print line, There we go. So this is what I've been doing. Wonder if par edit would work better in a CLJ file where the mode might be different. It, uh, Mike, you're totally right. It absolutely does work better in a CLJC file or CLJ file. Uh, this is why I haven't actually used par edit before. I like the flow of uh, literate programming inside an org file. Um, I like the fact that I can write code, split, um, no, 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 what did I do? Sorry, uh, I might have messed something up. No, I think we're good. There we go. I like that in the org mode context, I can create scratch code, uh, put it out to a different file really quick. I, I enjoy that workflow. I like the fact that I can uh, leave notes for myself here. All that stuff is useful to me, but par edit, if I um, enable it, so it's active now, it, it works or like it's active throughout the whole document. What I would love if it were active only inside code blocks, okay? So I came up with a way that it does check uh, when it's inside a code block, it'll enable par edit. When it's outside of a code block, it disables it. And that works really well until you have, for whatever reason, if I have a, uh, in unbalanced paren or quote or whatever, which could easily happen, but I don't want it to be a problem in prose. Uh, once you activate par edit mode, it complains about the whole file being unbalanced. So it doesn't work if you have uh, something like this in your normal prose. So it's not a perfect solution yet but inside a closure file specifically, it works perfectly. But if I edit the source files and not the org file, then the changes don't reflect back into the org file. So there is another thing that does work, but I don't like the mode switching that it does. You can do um, source block editing. I think that's what it is. But it's another mode switch, so I don't love that. Like I want I want as few uh, things I have to remember to toggle. I want as little of that as possible. But so so these are these are personal things that I don't not in a sub editing buffer. Yeah, I know. 
See here, like I don't know what happened. I did something wrong. <laughs> Oops. Anyway. Anyway, none of this matters all that much. These are just the problems I've decided matter <laughs> to my workflow. The obvious solution is don't use my workflow, right? So, but uh, I'm sometimes a little stubborn about that. So, you know, but Mike, you're definitely right. If I, if I only were editing source files directly, uh, not worrying about uh, org mode and stuff, uh, it would work. Oh, org edit source exit. There we go. Why? Org edit source abort. Well, that's just going to be the way it is, <laughs> apparently. Oh, maybe I could do this. Um, kill it. There we go. Problem solved. Have you tried turning it off and on again? Indeed I have. Okay, so um, to emit the actual Python code, I actually only need to do this. I only need to spit um, out.py, write FCS of whatever I want to write. And then uh, to prove that that is edited, or pardon me, uh, that it exists, let's open it up out.py and it is indeed python code it's a little ugly but it's not really meant to be read by a human so much as glanced at briefly <laughs> so what i'm trying to think about is a smooth way to um what i i don't know what i want to do exactly do i want to generate a pi file and then have a separate closure function that just shells out and calls free cad command line with that script as the argument or um something different i i'm not sure exactly what i want right now that so that's i think that's a reasonable thing to try brainstorm a little bit so what i would like to do first is see Let's close this document. I don't need it. I have the source, so I can do that later. Uh, let's clear that console. I'm trying to, th uh, what I wonder is if there's like a, uh, can I just open the pi file directly and have it work? I don't think I can, but I'm gonna try that. Do do, do do do. Okay, so we've got, I need to clean out my folders because <laughs> I make a lot of projects that don't go anywhere and then I feel bad for deleting them, but they're like not necessarily worth keeping. It's a problem. Um, what was this one called? FreeCAD. Oh, it's also not in the design. It's in dev. Oh, my life. Okay, so I can open the pi file, but I think it just opens an editor. Yeah. It. I'm pretty sure it also um, doesn't live update it. So if I were to redefine A for a moment. Okay, so that changed here. Oh, it's been modified. Do you want to reload it? Yes. Okay, so it detects modification. That's pretty interesting, at least. Uh, but that's not bringing us any closer to an automatically updating 3D model. So not perfect. But maybe that's not what we need with FreeCAD. Maybe. Maybe FreeCAD is like something I only consider as like a command line tool, you know, like I don't rely on it to 
do live views, I rely on it to create a step file and um, detailed drawings, maybe. So, let's have a look at, um, well, the simple way to execute this, by the way, if I go to FreeCAD here, if I list this, I have out.py right here. So I can do um, FreeCAD. Oh, that, oh no, it does load there. Okay, so this is, um, I aliased the word FreeCAD to the FreeCAD command line option. So it's running FreeCAD command um, right away. So I should be able to do this, FreeCAD out.py, and it should run that script. I think it did. The problem is I actually can't tell because it doesn't save anything. Like it might have totally executed the thing correctly and then just exited. <laughs> It didn't save a file, it didn't do anything fancy. Um, so let's change that in the output and then see if we can invoke FreeCAD and get a step file or something out nice and quick. It did generate a PyCache file here, so uh, it did something. FreeCAD, please. Uh, just like my life, my uh, computer's a mess. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Um, maybe that's a little unfair for me to say. I don't think my life's that big of a mess. I just sometimes feel like it is, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the editor it doesn't seem to give me like a run script context. So I, I don't know what the deal is with that, but um, oh, okay, well I take it back. That was pretty easy. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's what the file is. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing really. <laughs> the cool thing is it actually like produced something that's nice I love it when that happens okay so what um, what was invoked in the Python console here okay so import freecad GUI that's a non-starter for the script actually wait that's maybe not true I could maybe boilerplate some default stuff into the Python script where it just checks the context. If it's running in the command line, it just exports a file. If it's running in the GUI, it automatically refreshes its view. Maybe that would be pretty cool. But uh, I don't know if I need to do something like that. Let's do... Um... Right, so... I mean, it did all the right stuff. This, it's just this here. I can't, in the command line FreeCAD, I cannot import FreeCAD GUI because it, it hasn't loaded the, is it GUI or GUI? I don't know what the like proper way to, I don't, I don't actually like GUI, GUI, anyway. So in a command line thing, if you try to run this, I'm pretty sure it gives you an error. So if I try that, uh, let's see what happens. Apparently it worked. I wonder if that's, be I'm surprised that that worked, honestly. Let's do GUI dot. Hmm. 
let's see, let's mess around a bit, huh? How about that? I don't know what's gonna happen when I do this. I don't think it's gonna work, but it's experiment, you know? Yeah. Name GUI is not defined. Oh. Well, okay, that's, uh, I feel like that's a bit of a non-starter, so we'll just not uh, not go down that road right now. Um, right, anyway, first things first, let's add a little bit of, um, let's go with the, if I execute the script, I want it to create um, a step file. So what I would like to do there, let's get, um, let's trim this down to its barest thing, really simple thing, and see what is evoked when I export a step file. Those are the things I care to find out. So let's clear the, well, let, we'll clear that console in a moment. Here we go. All I want to get rid of is the circle stuff. All I want to keep is the cube stuff. So get rid of that. Cube length, let's do 40, 50, 60. The placement. Oh, this is going to be an issue, I think. Maybe not. Um, everyone can still see and hear what I'm doing, right? Yeah, look, things look okay. I hope people understand that I'm not like some free cat expert. I'm literally just like, it's like I'm poking at black box <laughs> with tweezers uh, and not in like a robust way in like a, oh, what, do I, what happens when I press this button kind of way. <laughs> uh, monkey at a typewriter kind of situation. But you know what, I'll own, I'll own that. I'm okay with that. Let's do uh, minus 25, and this is minus 30. All of this is, uh, this placement vector is just shifting the cube so that its center point is at 0, 0, 0, that's all. I expect nothing but full CAD mastery here, sir. Well, I'm sorry to say, Mike, but I can't actually provide it. I, in all seriousness, I am very good at SolidWorks. I can't show you, though, um, because I don't, have a license for SolidWorks. It's like prohibitive, prohibitively expensive for an individual, unless I were to acquire it through um, other means, which I don't want to do because it's a pain in the butt. And I like open source stuff anyway. But I am really good at SolidWorks. I I I won't even be humble about it. I'm good at it. I'm I'm I like it. Uh, but that is not something I can really stream, at least not right away. I also think that'd be quite a different audience, although it would be fun. It would be cool to do, but now I'm getting ahead of myself again. Right, so I add this cube. I don't want this sketch here either. We'll get rid of that. That was just adding the big square. The only re like, I, I, I'm just doing this to just get a cube in a document, very basic. And here we go, macro uh, execute. There we go, that's added the cube like I wanted. Oops, 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 oop. Uh, VF, there we go. Tell you what, uh, the Apple Magic Mouse is a problematic mouse for many reasons. One, it's just not super comfortable. I um, don't recommend actually using this mouse most of the time. Uh, it's also clear that like CAD tools 
are not really in the minds of a lot of the devs and designers over at uh, Apple is, is the feeling I get. Uh, a lot of CAD apps are Windows primary and they all tend to work UI and stuff like that way better on uh, Windows, which is kind of a surprising thing to me. It feels like a big gap in Apple's like uh, focus on creative apps, you know, but I don't know what I'm talking about. Excuse me. Uh, okay, so we've got this. Now let's clear this console and uh, file export. That's what I want to do. Okay, please select the objects you want to export. All of them, please. File, export. Well, there we go. Step with colors, it sounds pretty nice. Ooh, this is cool. You can even export OpenSCAD. <laughs> So if I if I get the free CAD thing working, I could generate OpenSCAD from the closure, or I could generate uh, Python from the closure, and then and then uh, OpenSCAD from the free CAD Python script. I could just I could just make a silly loop. I then I'd have to write a uh, OpenSCAD parser that converts OpenSCAD back into closure code. Then I have a circle. That actually would be fun to be able to round trip uh, closure to open SCAD back to closure. That'd be a fun. Uh, that'd be a fun project. One day I'll actually be good at like language design and parsers and all that sort of stuff. But it's not really going to happen today. I'll promise you that. Save as um, ASDF, my favorite placeholder name. Okay, so uh, I am going to also, no, I don't need that. All right, let's do uh, open. Let's open that file we just exported and see if it, yeah, so it has the same document structure. See that? The only difference is the symbol on here it knows that it's a box, but here I it might not. Yeah, okay. So there was something lost in the step. Hey Biz, how's it going? In uh, there's something lost in the um, conversion to step file, but I'm not going to worry about that for right now. I'm going to focus on uh, what happened here and put that into the FreeCAD script a little bit. Hope you're hanging in there okay there, Biz. Okay. App, get all of this. Don't need... Oh, I'm looking at the wrong part here. Okay, so the objects list, you have to populate that with all of the objects in the document. So I'm going to assume I can come up with that easy enough. Import, import GUI. Hmm. Not sure about this one. Taking an L in the stock market. Uh-oh. <laughs> Sorry to hear that one. Oops. I honestly, I don't have my finger on the pulse on that one. So I, I it's like, is it a major thing happening or a, like acute to your portfolio. Gonna have to start working again? Ugh. I mean, that's not a de facto bad thing, but it could be a, an unfortunate thing. Hope you managed to sort that out in a nice way that you're not, uh, that you're not feeling too bad about the work you do, you know? So import, import GUI, export objects. This is the stuff I'm a little, let's go here, free CAD. <laughs> we'll program for food. 
<laughs> oh boy, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> That's how it feels sometimes, eh? Uh, import. I'm so not used to camel casing. Yeah, here, this is, okay, so this is what I was worried about. Cannot load a, a GUI module in console application. Um, but I solved this problem somewhere else before. So let's open up scripts. Is it in scripts? It should be. Let's have a peek. Okay, uh, here we go. This is my perpetual problem. Uh, when I am working, uh, I have too many windows and I always am adjusting them around. <laughs> hey, you're starting your stream biz, good luck. I hope it goes well for you. Uh, I would tune in myself, but I'm, uh, as you can see, currently streaming. <laughs> have a good stream there, biz. Hey, Mike, have to go run some post-work errands. See you tomorrow. Have a good one, Mike. Thanks for tuning in. Biz, have a good one too. Thanks for tuning in as well. Yeah, peace to you. Implementing feature toggles this session. Nice stuff, nice stuff. All right, let's see. I am, oh, okay. Alrighty. Uh, um, okay, so here I have an example. I can actually run import. There's a GUI version and a non and a command line version of the library. So it it seems pretty trivial to just import that and then uh, go from there. So actually. Basically, all I need to do is copy this little section here. Let's try this. Okay, let's do um, the bit that I care about is right here. So let's build that in to the output of this somewhere here. All right, uh, okay, okay. All right. That's the model, that's in the wrong one there. We want the boilerplate stuff here. So we've got a preamble and a postamble. I think I, I probably should just add it to this postamble stuff here. So I will uh, do that. <laughs> Let's also import, import. It seems super weird to say it that way, but that's not a big deal. So to do this, we actually just take import dot export and here I might be able to one liner this. If I just do doc dot root objects, I might do the trick. And now here, how do I want to do Is there a way to get a full file path? Let's see, Python get file f 
full path. Anyone know Python well enough to know how to get the full path to the script being executed? I must have looked this up before and I just don't remember how to do it. How do I get the path of the script I'm running? I'll give this a shot, not sure about it. Hmm, not the answer apparently. That's okay. Um, oh, these, okay, oh man, a little bit of this is coming back here. It's like buried deep in the back of my mind. <laughs> All the different things you're supposed to do with Python. This is what I want, the full path. OS dot path dot absolute path of path name. All right, let's copy this and then trim away the stuff I don't need. Also need to copy the uh, share link to the uh, to that answer because it's usually good where possible to get uh, links to where you got stuff from so you can credit people and also find back the uh, explanations and stuff like that, right? Okay, um, FCS Postamble. Here, oops, there we go. Import sys and OS. Let's move that up to the import part of the preamble. Oops. I also uh, I want to do this. I'm not sure that that matters. That's okay though. All right, uh, import sys and os. So we've got, I don't need to print any of these out. In fact, this line is not needed. Um, path name, we want that. I don't want to print the path name, I don't need that. Excuse me, by the way, that's my bad. Uh, let's just, so there's path name, then there's full path equals this thing here. Yeah, I think that's okay. Okay, so then, now that I've got the full path thing there, I should theoretically just be able to do import.export doc.root objects, which is up to here, and then this whole business. Is that gonna make sense? We shall see. I actually wonder, I'm gonna see, I wanna see what happens if I just pass full path into this directly. And see what's going on there. Ooh, why? No, that's good. There we go. Missing uh, close paren right here at the full path. Is that? Did I fill it in just now, or am I missing it somewhere else still? This is one obvious problem when you're just like mashing strings together. Yeah, found it. Okay, perfect. Thank you for pointing it out. I appreciate that. Okay. Um, I don't know if this full path will actually be, um, is this U? Does that mean like this string is Unicode encoded or something like that? I'm gonna, I'm gonna see what happens when I just run it like this. I'll just see, just see what happens, you know? Okay, but the last thing I have to do actually is um, I 
wait a second, there's one thing I've done incorrectly. This here, this O path, uh, how did I name that? Okay, here. No, that's not right. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. This function exporter script names it a certain way. It must be like out dot step or something like that file out it gets the file name and then changes it to dot step okay let's um, can I Let's see, can I do this? Ooh, I can cheat. I'm gonna be so lazy for a second. Actually, let me do this. No, 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 no. Let's see. Let's see if this will actually do anything. Escape. All right, uh, let's see what happens. I love doing it this way. <laughs> just just messing around. Uh, it is possible that full path is actually not just a string. It might be some kind of object, so this might not work. But we'll see. Worth a shot, really. OK, so um, out.py is here. Boy, what a mess of uh, windows and stuff. Here's the REPL for this. OK, that's what's happening here. This is just reference, so we can either close it or ignore it. I choose to ignore it for now. Um, let's give it a shot. Oh, let's also redefine A now to be just, just a cube. 40, 50, 60, there we go. Easier thing to work with. Do I want to reload it? Yeah, sure. No reason not to. There's no reason to either because I'm not going to try to run it there. Let's exit this. So I've generated, there's a new out.py file. Theoretically, if I've done things correctly, I'll run it and it'll generate a file called out.py.step. Well, let's find out. Freak CAD. Free CAD, there we go, out. I think it won't work. Uh, let's remove ASDF.step. Okay, so it didn't work, which is okay. Um, you know what? Let's do. Uh, let's let's take a slightly more intelligent approach here. Okay. Oh. Right as I say that, I realize that uh, I did the silly thing and did not reevaluate the post amble here. So let's let's have a look now. There we go. So <laughs> now. Now it's actually got new code in it. Let's try to run that. All right, FreeCAD, stop. Yeah, sure, fine. OK, let's try this again. I still expect it not to work, but now at least I expect it not to work and then give me something. There we go. Name OS is not defined. I thought I.
Oh, uh, same problem. I have to, I did also change the preamble, so I have to redefine the preamble. That's what's going on here. Uh, let's save this, by the way. Yes, let's reload it. Okay, there we go. Maybe this will finally work. Let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Ooh. That is not the file name I expected it to generate. Oh. Okay, so it's wrong, but okay, that's fine. So let's move uh, from dev freecad dot step into this folder. So now we have this here. We have uh, the file name was just incorrect. So I'll work on that, but it generated a step file. If we vim that, it looks like valid step data. So let's quit that. Let's open it up here and see if it actually is a, a solid file that we would expect. Let's also, you know, get rid of most of this. We don't need it. No, thank you. Open. I guess it doesn't, it kind of, I, I don't know how it works, but it looks like the Mac OS file explorer caches the, like it caches the file list and it doesn't update it instantaneously when you're trying to load files again. So you'd have to wait until it like force refreshes or something. I, I don't know what's going on. Things are slower than I want them to be is the truth of the matter. Hey, look at that. We actually have a, a uh, shape output the way we would kind of expect. So that's a nice, that's nice. But I would like, I would prefer if um, it exported <laughs> to the correct folder and with the correct file name. Okay, so It kind of looks like if I were to do this, it'll save it to out.step. So let's try that. Let's see what happens. Let's uh, remove freecadclj.step. I did spit the file out. Let's run freecad out.py. There we go, that did work. Out.step, that's pretty nice. So if I vim out.step, that's looking okay. Sweet, lots of step in the right direction. I'm gonna um, be right back and get some coffee because I love coffee. Won't be long. Mm -hmm.
All right. Oh, get the screen back up. There we go. Okay, so let's um, let's think through this a little bit yet. How's everybody doing, by the way? Hope your stream's been going okay. Or your stream. <laughs> I'm hope your day has been going okay. My stream has been going okay. Hope you have been well throughout the stream. <laughs> what am I saying? I don't know what I'm doing. Da -da. Zoop. The sun is rising. Green Coder, you're up late. Or you're up early. I'm not sure which. I hope you're feeling okay. Like if uh, if you're having trouble sleeping or something like that, that's too bad. Unless this is just like your schedule, like you really uh, you've got a different sleep schedule or whatever. I just hope I hope things are going okay. <laughs> uh, where what what's the good what's a good next thing to do here that makes sense? Um. Hmm. Trouble sleeping as usual, not a problem. Yeah. I uh, so to be uh, that that's too bad. I, it it's unfortunate to hear that you uh, struggle with sleeping sometimes. I actually had the same thing last night. I don't know what it was. I couldn't get to sleep for quite a long time. You know, every once in a while it does just happen. Nothing to freak out about, but. Hopefully you get some good sleep when you can, right? Sleep's important. Helps the brain box work a little bit better, in my experience anyway. Okay, so I'm, what I'm struggling with right now is trying to figure out the um, ergonomics, as it were, of using this FreeCAD emitter, right? I am trying to, Uh, think of how someone might actually want to use this. The nice thing about the Open SCAD emitter from SCAD CLJ is it makes the string, you spit that string to whatever you want, and Open SCAD automatically refreshes itself when it detects a file change. Saying that out loud, the next thing I'm actually going to experiment with is if I can make, if I make a script, let's see what happens if I uh, save Let's save this file and see what it looks like. How about that? Okay, freecad clj out dot. Just call it out save. So that should generate a file here. Yeah, here out dot freecad. I don't know what this is all. I don't know what it all stands for, but it's a freecad file format. I think it's probably an actual like a database so I probably can't it's probably not just text but let's see what it looks like yes it's good old gobbledygook I love it so that's not what I need but I'm really trying to think through how like how you would use this kind of thing in an actual workflow. My like 
how I think I'll end up using it is way more of a one-way kind of thing, right? Like I'll use a different program entirely to live view a 3D model or even a web page. And then the step export will be kind of a final process sort of thing. But it's fun to explore kind of the boundaries of things a little bit. So if I... Um, like, can I change this file externally and then this live updates? That's what I'm wondering. So let's see if I can create an environment where that might actually happen. So it looks like all I actually have to do here is run the save as thing instead of let's change the post amble boilerplate now for a moment uh, what's a python comment yes okay here we go so close that let's change um that okay uh, so now that's the full path we're just not going to export a step file for this test we're going to um, doc dot oop I have to actually write this <laughs> in the string uh, naturally Let's do. Uh, let's do it this way. Doc dot save as. Yeah. Full path. Should be as simple as that, really. All right. So I'm gonna run this. Um, run this and see what's up. Should be okay. Boom. Out dot pi. Let's run precad out dot pi. Let's see if it saves the file. Oh, it made a uh, different one here. Hmm. Well, let's um, let's close this. Let's run that again. See what file it generates. Open that file in the GUI, and then see what happens when we run the script again. Okay, so that made out dot this. Probably there's like a lock on it, so I can't actually do what I wanted, but that's, I mean, I'm not surprised if that happens, and I also am not too beat up if that happens. That's the way it goes. Let's do this. Okay, so let's, oh, ooh, can I do this? Open out dot f. Oh, yes. Very nice. It was invisible, but that's okay. Not bad, not bad at all. All right, so let's delete it. Okay, so we have a file out. Let's save it, right? It's out.fc whatever right here. There's also this one, 
now. That's uh, not quite what I was expecting. Hmm. Well, let's run freecad out.py and see what happens. Let's see. Right, so any, yeah, it'll just generate another file and append a one or whatever to it. I bet if I run this again, it'll create a third file dot with a two at the end, but let's see. Let's see if that's accurate. May as well try it, right? Okay. Oh, it didn't. Okay, so that's not quite what I ex... Well, okay, I'm surprised. But, so here's the thing, it's just not... Like, OpenSCAD, if you have a file open, you can edit it externally, and then the viewer will refresh and um, re-render. Mm -hmm. So you can use it as just a viewer. Um, that's not appearing to be the case with a FreeCAD file, which honestly is not surprising. It's a much more complicated thing. Um, it's an actual, I'm sure it's an actual database of object data, right? So it's not quite gonna work the same way. And that's totally fine, but I have to now Well, just think about what I what I want to use as a viewer for this sort of thing. But now that's going a little bit beyond FreeCAD itself. Here's another thing I can do. Let's kind of just explore the export options and see uh, if I can make some kind of tool around it that is still pretty useful. Actually, wait. A new plan, new idea, very briefly. Uh, okay, so FreeCAD. If I uh, do vim asdf.py, I just write print. Oops, forgot that I'm in vim. Insert mode, please. Print hello. Python ASDF.py. Okay, that does a thing. That's good. So if I run freecad ASDF.py, since it is a Python environment, it should print hello and then exit, right? Okay, that's good. All right, why do that? no real reason. Um, next thing I want to do is try to figure out ooh, what was it called? FreeCAD was it like this? I don't remember. Um, pipe print hello I'm not sure if this is anything Ooh. Hmm. We're kind of on the way. That was No, okay. Um I forget what this is called. And I forget how it's supposed to work. <laughs> Let's try the simpler thing. I don't think this is going to work. It did open me into. No, that's not it. Um... Let's see. Linux pipe uh, string as if it were a file. Okay, this is, we're getting on the right track here. See, the thing is someone in a previous stream mentioned how to do this and I wrote a note, but I forget where I wrote the note. <laughs> so, so oops, let's, um, 
Let's have a look at something here. I guess the note was in org mode. You're almost certainly right. <laughs> I just currently forget where I was trying to work on that. Oh, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, it might actually be right in here. Yep, here it is. Oh, this is me embarrassing myself in front of people on the internet, but hey, that's fine. All right, so this, Process substitution, that's the word I couldn't remember, or a uh, phrase, I mean. All right, so, and it's from a uh, user named Graz. Use this to make a pseudo file in process substitution operator. So that's not, I need to mess around with this to learn how to do it. Oh, maybe, maybe if I do something like this. I'm not sure this is right, but we'll see what happens. Print. Hello. That's not it. We're getting somewhere, kind of. Although not really. Uh, <laughs> well, let's try this. Uh, if I send this string into echo, no, not it. Cat, like this maybe, no. It's, so I don't, uh, I don't know if I'm doing this the right way. Uh, that's the first problem. <laughs> um, let's see here. Let's try something like this. Uh, we've got this. If I pipe into that, is that what I want? No. Or I, do I have this in the wrong order now? Right, so echo print hello, and then pipe the result of that into free CAD, this thing. Oops. Nope, still not what I'm after. Nope. No, that didn't work. Right? Yeah, no, okay. All right, uh, let's take a step back again and have a look at what this is. Because maybe this is all I need actually. Let's try this approach here. So we'll echo the thing into FreeCAD where we pass the file in as dev standard in which might be exactly all I, all I need. So let's try that. Yeah. Okay, uh, echo print hello into free CAD, but we do this. Well, it didn't work. Hmm. That's not what I meant. Uh
echo command in the pipe sends the contents of the variable or a string, which theoretically, to the standard input of the next command. And that opens the standard input as a separate file descriptor and reads that. I thought this would work. Free CAD echo hello. Let's give that a shot. I'll, I'll give it a shot. I'm, uh, this seems like a thing that I should probably read a little more in uh, echo. I should probably read into this on my own so that I understand in general what's going on a little bit better. So I'm trying to actually send in a, a Python script. So this print is Python's print, and I'm just using hello as a string to to check. I also have no idea. <laughs> I, that, th thanks for your help anyway. I appreciate the effort. Yeah, so file format not supported, dev fd11. So it seems as if you can't. Well, let's uh, let's try this with just Python direct. Oops, nope, that's wrong. It kind of seems like uh, what happened to it. It seems like I'm on the right track, but FreeCAD's not. Yeah, for whatever reason, so maybe it's a FreeCAD thing. One second. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. Right, so I guess temporary files are just not. Just not supported. If I do Python print hello, does that work directly? Okay, so. Right. So this, this set of lines here is uh, is being passed in as like Python's treating it correctly as if it were a file. So that's working on the Python side. It's just not working with FreeCAD. Maybe we're, maybe we pass a stream and it wants a random access memory block. That could be it. Uh, that's a good point. Um, that's very possible. Let's see here. Free CAD read. Um, pass Python string. Command line. Wow, what a what a weird soup of keywords there, Green Coder. That might be that might actually be what's going on, in which case I need to read up on how FreeCAD implements the uh, its its um, shell thing. So this might be kind of cheating the way around what I'm trying to actually do, but what I could potentially do is not um, execute FreeCAD, the program, but Python, the program, and import a FreeCAD library from the Python thing, and maybe maybe I can make it work through that. Does that make sense? All right, let's try. Python, ooh, this is not gonna be great though. 
It needs to be Python 3, I think. Do I have Python 3? Maybe it's trying to listen to changes on the provided file. Yeah, I'm not sure. That, that could be. Um, this is a thing I'm going to read up on off stream because it'll, it, just watching me read is not uh, particularly exciting. What's happening here? Well, that took a surprising amount of time. Okay, uh, import, this is not gonna work. Import free CAD, right? Will it work? That'd be nice. Naturally. Uh, okay. Which free CAD, please? User local bin free CAD. Oh, what a mess. I love it. Okay. System.path append. Oh, this is not going to be right. Um, oh, of course. Import sys. That's also not going to work, but hey, why not? Why not mess around with it anyway? Import free CAD. Yeah. So um, this bin is the sim link to, let's, uh, let's go around with this, um, file, does this work? Uh, which free CAD, pipe that into file, does that tell me anything? Oops, no it doesn't, apparently. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. File user local bin free CAD. My Unix tool knowledge is at its limits, unfortunately. LDD, is that the same, is that an important thing? Is that useful? Oh no, isn't it just LD? I want it to show me where it's sim link to because I don't remember. Unless this isn't a sim link. That's possible. Well, that's not what I needed. Well, let's just do this now. User local bin slash. No, sorry. Uh, lib. Uh oh, too many files. It's a lot of possibilities. All right, where is FreeCAD installed again? Um, I don't remember. Okay. System.path append user lib free cat lib. So 
it's not that. Okay. Um, there's applications. Is it in here? I don't remember. Free CAD CD free CAD dot app CD contents. This is where it is. CD Mac. Not a directory, of course not. Um, free dot slash help. Here's the lib folder. Whoa. Okay, so free CAD shared object is in here. Is that what I need it to, is that, is that right? Hmm. Right, so here's free CAD command and here's free CAD. Did I, I might have literally copied this executable into the bin folder instead of sim linking things, which might be bad. <laughs> Oops. I don't remember what I did, is the truth. Anyway, doesn't matter. Let's try to. Um, get this um, how do I list the full file path again oh s PWD There we go. Okay, let's see if we can use this in the context of Python 3. Import sys sys.path.append this thing. Oh. Wait, lib slash. Mm, let's try that. Let's do import free CAD Interesting. I love it. Seg fault. That's fun. That's different. <laughs> At least it's a new error. That's kind of fun. Okay, so this might be another non-starter. Um, no, ignore that, please. I don't care. Um, That was, I didn't expect that. Let's see the lib exec list, please. Not that, that's not it. Okay, so I think uh, maybe, is it in the share? Share. Hmm. Well, well, well. Oh, 
Okay, well that doesn't matter right now. I'm not gonna worry about this for the for the time being. I'm gonna uh, keep a few notes here. Um, let's um. FC name is the name of this one. And we'll call this FC name. And then this, we're going to copy and paste, get rid of this. This one's going to be step name out.step. We're going to comment this out. We're not going to get rid of it yet, but we're going to keep this in and we're going to change this to step name. Save it check that it's working there would lib python clj help in your project i'm not sure let's see what that is lib python clj uh my gut tells me yes and i'll have a look <laughs> python bindings for closure you can embed closure in python Thirty-two bit support. Bridge between JVM objects and Python objects easily. Use Python in your Java and some Java in your Python. Python objects are linked to the JVM garbage collection such that when they are no longer reachable from the JVM, their references are released. Wow. That's amazing. That's so cool. Finding the Python libraries is done dynamically, allowing one system to run on multiple versions of Python. Huh. Well, that's amazing. This here, this means that we want to be able to load and use Python modules almost as if they were closure namespaces. Okay, so the first thoughts that come into my head are this. Uh, one, what I'm doing here is very obviously not robust, right? Like I'm, I'm just pushing strings around and it's just a single script that you can run in FreeCAD to get a set of models. Not bad, but not um, a, a largely scalable approach I would say but it is really good f as a first pass prototype kind of deal once I get this method running and I can use it to make some models just like I can with the SCAD open SCAD stuff then it makes a lot of sense for me to scope this as a project either that I want to continue or that I'm happy with as a quote unquote prototype. If I want to continue developing this in an actual way that people might enjoy using, this seems like a very powerful tool to make it work properly. Because the first thing that I would change with the approach here is um, at the very least I would build a uh, some kind of closure data structure and closure functions to manipulate those data structures instead of just um, emitting all these weird string things, right? If you wrap it up in a map, that's a step forward. Then, uh, once you got a reasonably good data structure and some transform functions, you could link it up to an actual Python instance basically like you could actually load and use python modules like it says here to integrate even more tightly at that point you basically would have a closure plugin for free cad kind of thing so this is a really cool library that i have to look into but it's beyond the scope of the prototyping that i'm doing i hope that makes sense but uh, I'm going to go ahead and give this one a good old uh, star. <laughs> and now it's on the list of things I'll look at. 
but it, yeah, beyond the scope of the prototype, I'll say that much. But this looks super cool. Yeah, so there's a require Python. I'm guessing that's a macro that basically in, invokes in Python and uses it it's loading or whatever and blah, blah, blah. Image, okay, so this here. Oh, this is amazing. Like, look at this, this, this like so so cb it's it's just like it's a closure it it feels like it's just a closure function in a closure namespace that's amazing i love that all right i'm definitely gonna come up with a dumb waste of time projects with this <laughs> i mean that in the best way this is so cool pi dot what's that refer pi dot pi double dot pi dot dash as pi at a quick glance i kind of feel like this is trying to sort of replicate um like in python you do doc dot recompute like you have a you access the um attributes and methods of an object with the dot notation or whatever that's called and this is kind of trying to do that as well that's my guess like this reads as pi dot model dot bind maybe anyway have to look into it that is fascinating yeah maybe yeah I, I don't know I, I'm literally just looking and guessing it I have to I'd have to play around with it to find out uh, of course, a NumPy <laughs> example. Can't go wrong with that. A document on all the features. Beginning usage is simple. Import your modules and use them from Clojure. This is really cool. We put effort into making sure things like sequences and ranges transfer between the two languages. Amazing. Man, I'm, I'm pumped about this. <laughs> Pandas bindings, next journal stuff, site closure video, neat. Uh, as a tangent, this next journal stuff, I, I have to keep my finger on the pulse of that as well because um, it looks, next journal looks super clean. I, uh, I love Jupyter notebooks as a concept, but I don't use them because they have felt clunky to me, although it's been a while. Uh, next journal seems like something in the same vein and it uses closure <laughs> so I have to look into it it seems super cool like this looks amazing I, I just clicked a random thing and what love it another thing to look into the list of things to look to, to study up on just keeps growing which is both good and bad but hey that's fine okay uh, close this. I don't need that stuff. Don't need that. Something went wrong with this. I'll close it then. That. Oh, I actually need that open because I need to copy the uh, uh, here. I need to share this copy link and put that over here and the preamble stuff. Where was it again? Boilerplate, yep. Oh, wrong thing, there we go. Um, the postamble has some, uh, which <laughs> found from here. Oops, there we go. User 
John W. There. If you can, keep track of where you get stuff so that if and when you publish anything, you can you can uh, link people to proper credit. I think that's important as much as you can to do that sort of thing. All right. Um, I think. Oh man, I've been going for three hours. I've had a I've had a good day. This has felt fun. I like um, the exploratory poking and prodding at a system like this. I've learned a few things. I've learned a few things I that I need to learn. <laughs> Uh, related to process substitution that'll be kind of the next thing I uh, really focus on then I realize I'm gonna need to poke around with libpython because that looks amazing and pay attention to scoping my projects nicely because uh, this is a good prototype but I want to figure out a good scope and plan for that going uh, into the future so uh what's what what's what now hmm i have to shoot a video for my youtube channel and uh, so i'm gonna i'm actually gonna stop the stream in just a minute and do that but since i'm talking about the youtube channel uh shooting video for that just as a heads up let's do this I'm trying to sh do this here YouTube please one day this will run <laughs> right so oh boy let's have a peek shall we at youtube.com slash c slash adam james tv this is my youtube channel it looks like this adam james it's got some videos some new videos coming in soonish uh i always think i can bash out videos nice and quick but they end up taking me longer than i think because i want to be able to explain things clearly and well uh, I try to do these things, function showcases, and just show some fun little projects with closure. And I, uh, I want people to see those, so have a look. <laughs> That's all I got for today. Uh, thanks for joining me on the stream. I've had a nice day. I hope uh, you have a good time. Anyone tuned in after the fact, please consider following this channel, the YouTube channel, anything like that. Share it with friends who you might uh, think, who you think might enjoy it. All that stuff's super helpful to me. And I'm gonna get going. I hope you have a good one. I will be back tomorrow. That's all I got. Goodbye. <laughs>